Second is well, somewhat more complicated. It's called isomorphic metaphor. So I'm going to tell you a story about a client I had. Isomorphic. Isomorphic just means one-to-one -one mapping with relationships preserved. It comes out of mapping theory in certain forms of uh, mathematics. It's a very simple concept. So why is the intention of using a method? Well, actually, it should have begun. So I go back to the beginning. I haven't said anything. What does a farmer do before they plant the seeds in the ground? They prepare the ground. <laughs> we, we, we are in agreement? OK. That's the purpose of medical. You're going to activate access to the unconscious. You're going to stimulate its activity so it's there, it's ready to grab what you're about to present. Before you do it explicitly, you prepare the ground. What is the first thing a really good cook does? Clear the counters. Set out what they need, the ingredients, and then begin the process. What does a good mechanic do with a car? So the farmer, the culinary, the chef, well, they're all the same. You understand, these are the same thing at the level of structure. So the trick here is to create a <coughs> metaphor which has a one-to-one -one relationship with the key elements in the presenting context in the quote problem, the challenge. Now, by changing the, the noun, by changing the names of what you're talking about, the conscious mind goes, oh, why is he talking about a farmer? <laughs> so you distract them. You send the conscious mind off on a fruitless attempt to figure out what the hell you're doing. So you don't have the guardians of the unconscious screening for you, the conscious. There's no screening because they're going, I'm going to get what? God, it's boring sitting here listening to these stories. Stuff. And this is, this is what many people told me who I sent to Erickson for the experience ago. Well, he was amazing, but I, I almost fell asleep a number of times. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> so isomorphism. You change the names involved. You change the nouns in order to confuse and distract the conscious mind. How does the unconscious mind know who is who? This character in the semantic space represents the, the wife and this family, and this one the, the, the grandmother, and this one the child. Because the relationships between the counterpart elements in the semantic space are the same as the relationships between the characters they represent. The unconscious is full of relationships. It, that's why your dreams are so weird. It doesn't care about nouns. It, pigs can fly. Sure they can. If they're propelled by, now you start the relationship part. So your unconscious is constantly treating you with the metaphors by changing the nouns and giving you dreams where the relationships are stable and they're pointing at things in your life. But the puzzle is there. And conscious say, often the patient will not figure them out. Which I think is quite appropriate. Okay. Okay, so let's say those are the four key elements in this particular presentation. Now, step so step one is list the key element subsidies or not things and events that are that mark this particular presentation. Now think of a semantic space, horticulture, carnival, sports, writing a novel. Intuitively pick one. Just hold it. I don't want to know what it is. In general, you want it to be something you know quite a bit about. If, I, if my client is a nuclear physicist and I use entanglement theory, I'm probably going to get into trouble. <laughs> because he or she knows a hell of a lot more about it than I know. I'm not going to talk to a professional pilot about the intricacies of uh, turbulence and uh, lift and uh, stall speeds and 
different attitudes, like turning as opposed to straight down the line. No, uh, he, he's got that. He's got that space. Unless I'm really, I really know what I'm talking about. In which case, it's not totally compelling because he knows the metaphor is captured. So, something you know quite a bit about, and something you like talking about because it has a nice impact on your state. You don't need any frame when you tell the story. The story carries its own series. However, if you're a little uncomfortable, like so you've been talking explicitly about it, and suddenly you're going to tell the story. So, I mean, you can use quotes. I'm not sure how to respond to what you described. If my brother were here, if my grandfather, if my father, if Milton Air, they would look you in the eyes and say, and then you tell the story. So it gives you a transition. I actually like sharp edges. So I don't even do that kind of transition. I just go. And by the way, if at any point, as you're telling a metaphor, the client starts to offer you signals that they're getting conscious of their computer. Then you talk about a, a sprout of corn, which towered over the local oak trees. I have never seen anything like that. What's that? A distractor. They can't fit that in because it doesn't fit. <laughs> so you just you disorient them once again. Now, what if the, the client works out what the what's going on right, and says it? Uh, uh, and the answer is, you can now elaborate the story. You can, let's just first part of the story. Now you continue, and you have a new isomorphism, which incorporates whatever the feedback was, and you get further away from her ability to make sense consciously out of it. Because you want the unconscious to take charge of this particular process. Now, how do you know when to stop the metaphor? Well, there's a structural issue here. This is the pacing, and you present the story. And the way you present the story is exactly what we were talking about. I mean, your delivery. Notice how slowly I will tell the story when I have a target that I'm working for. And the emphasis, which I'm marking with my hand to make sure that we, the emphasis, the <coughs> rhythm of my presentation will be a multiple of your heart rate or your breathing pattern. Each time you reach the top of your inhalation cycle, I'll mark it, or the bottom, or the midpoint. It doesn't matter. It's arbitrary as long as it's synchronized with your ongoing movement and particularly your respiratory. If a woman's wearing dangling earrings, you can read the pulse straight off the earring. It's not a rush past this. Do you understand what I said? Any repetitive body rhythm, whether it's respiration or heart rate, that you can get access to by calibration, and I'm mentioning a couple of tricks. If a person's leg is crossed over here, the, the leg will actually move with the pulse. So there's lots of places in the body where you can learn to recognize through physiological movement what so use those in the delivery. That will ensure deeper forward. Lots of space. Slow down. Drop the voice. Use a special voice or a metaphor. And another voice when you're talking to both conscious and unconscious. I pass these delivery variables on. This is just words. And you know, go out there and practice it. Just have a conversation and dinner with somebody today. And Whatever you're doing, just change the delivery variable to what you're doing. And notice a state change so you can get. If you if you're discovered, if it's clear to you that the top, so you throw one of these things in which cannot be folded into the story. It's, so you continue the story and distract them with stuff inside the story that has no relevance to what you're doing here. You could change your voice a bit to mark out that I'm just now messing with you, and then drop back to the voice to continue the metaphor. So uh, lots of things to do about it. So adjust the form of delivery using the same process, structure, 
for the particular context, the person, their age, their background, etc. Uh, and this will work pretty quickly. Okay? How you make the marking work. And it, insofar as you, as in the example of the quotes, metaphor, the simple one at the beginning, if you say, and I looked into his eyes and said, and you, you do what you're describing, that's a really powerful thing about it, especially if you're not <coughs> Slow down. Let the responses develop nicely so you can actually see and or hear them. Um, so this is all, uh, I think this is apparent, it requires practice. So I would recommend, as a, as a way of getting into the game here, um, that you each evening go, what's happening tomorrow? And in fact, tomorrow you have to present metaphors, so this is a perfect example. And, and go, okay, what's the metaphor? What's the message? How do we want to do this? Which form? And by the way, I'm going to talk about the solution space in a moment, but I want to present the third metaphor. So, if Fred DeVee comes to me and he says, blah, 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 and he's talking about his great uncle, and this is a character that I got, really, where did this guy live? So what I'll do is I'll anchor voice quality change, posture, touch, whatever it takes. I'll anchor the key elements instead of writing them on a list somewhere, internally or externally. And now I can say, when, when Buck Rogers got to Mars. So I, I don't need structure. The structure is that I'm making the connections not through isomorphism, but through anchoring. So I can have a flea. Well, if I touch that same anchor, and when I mention the flea, that's whoever I said it was, uncle, or whatever. So the characters can be gotten to by structural means or by direct anchoring. So you anchor the key elements in the thing and you tell any story you want. Now you can make the identification. The relationships don't have to be the same. So reduce the structure and put some more on your anchoring competencies, which is a calibration exercise. Exercise in timing and calibration. Now review the quotes. Formulate the message. Create a thinly disguised context in which you can pass it. Match your actions to the words you're using. You're deliberate. Second, isomorphism. Change the names to confuse everybody. Keep the relationships constant. Build yourself a metaphor. It can be as short as off to the plane, or as elaborate and extended as the, the example I've offered here this morning. And third, replace structural elements to make sure the unconscious knows what the casting character is with direct anchoring. Using your posture, your qualities, etc. Okay.